I am now pleased to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Donald Berwick, President Emeritus and Senior Fellow at the Institute for Healthcare Improvement. Don is also former administrator of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services and has worked extensively with the British National Health Service, so he brings a truly international perspective on emerging models of care to meet the social needs of Americans. We're so honored to have him with us today. Don? Thank you so much, uh, Catherine. Thank you all for uh, the chance to spend some time with you on a topic that feels really, really important to me. I'm, I'm delighted to be here with my uh, colleagues on the panel, and I look forward to a really uh, exciting meeting. Uh, I'll look forward to hearing to Julianne and Robin get into specifics, but I'm going to be talking more generally about the background. I see the issue of loneliness as a component of, a, of the larger domain of social determinants of health, and I want to explain that to you as, uh, as best I can. Uh, to do so, I'm going to use the words of a colleague of mine from England, uh, Ben Collins, is a young researcher at the King's Fund in England. He's recently published a phenomenal report on Montefiore Medical Center in Brooklyn, in the Bronx, I mean. I'm not going to talk about Montefiore specifically, but the words of his report are so eloquent, I wanted to begin uh, by uh, begin by quoting him. Um, uh, here, here, here's, here's what Ben says. Every day in New York, the D train running from Coney Island to the Bronx achieves an astonishing process of social segregation. Picking up the train in Midtown Manhattan, uh, you join a representative <coughs> uh, mix of the New York population, suited professionals, manual workers, children going to school. As the train crosses 85th Street uh, in, uh, alongside Central Park, the residents of, uh, the, of the, upper, um, the, the residents of the Upper East Side of Manhattan, um, uh, you have about an average household income of $180,000. Uh, smoking, obesity, and chronic diseases are well below the national average. <clears throat> Life expectancy stands at 85, even better than Japan. By the time you cross 165th Street, the heart of the Bronx, uh, almost all the white people and all the suited professionals have exited the train. Average household income has shriveled from $180,000 to, 40, to $45,000. Unemployment has doubled. <clears throat> In the South Bronx, 65% of children are born into poverty. Between 85th Street and 165th Street, life expectancy drops by a decade. Uh, six months for every minute on the subway. 2.3 years for every mile traveled. The residents of projects in Fordham Heights can glimpse Trump Tower in the distance, but like the view from um, Oldham to Manchester in, in London uh, or Tower Hamlets to the city of London, the wealth there may well be on another planet. Few healthcare organizations have been matched to such inequity. The social and environmental forces propelling poor people into sickness are too great. The tools of traditional healthcare, the pills and the operation, inadequate to the challenge. Uh, ben is here eloquently describing uh, the effect of what is, we call in, in, the, in the jargon social determinants of illness. It's not just an American issue, nor is it just an issue of poverty. There are all sorts of circumstances that contribute to illness that are, um, that are uh, uh, dramatic, have dramatic impact on our well-being. This is the so-called subway map for London. Uh, if you travel from uh, Oxford Circus to um, to East London, uh, the, the life expectancy differs by 75 years, and not all of the parameters that we just talked about in the Bronx-Manhattan comparison apply. What is this difference about? I mean, we are looking here differences in health status and well-being that absolutely overwhelm any differences that we achieve through interventions in healthcare. The effect of statins on survival, or even any form of surgery that I know, cancer chemotherapy. Uh, the, the anything we do in medicine has no impact that, that even begins to approximate for populations these differences like 10, 10 or 20 years of life expectancy. What's going on? Well, the answer begins favorably, which is we know what's going on. The science of the generators of health is extremely well developed. I've shown you here three of the, of the giants in the field, the work of Sir Douglas uh, Black and his colleagues in the, in the Black Commission in England, which, which published the report on the health divide, which absolutely lays out the sources of these variations in health status. Uh, Julian Tudor Hart, a, 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 an amazing Welsh GP who died just, uh, just this year, 
um, published repeatedly on the effects of community and community characteristics uh, on uh, health and well-being in the communities he came to know very well. His last book called The Political Economy of Healthcare is well worth your reading. It, dealt, it deals with the relationships between policy and well-being. And then probably the outstanding thinker of our age, uh, Sir Michael Marmot, also in, but the, you know, probably the most respected student in the world today of the health gap, the understanding of generators of, of, of wellness and well-being and why people can differ so much in, in their health status um, independent of the care they get. And the one consistent finding from all of these, all of these studies, all of the reports, is the effect of clinical care, the $3 trillion that we spend in American health care uh, on well-being, is, is it's pushing on a strain. Clinical care, to overstate it, has very, very little to do with health status. Uh, once you're sick, it makes a difference in, in whether you'll get well. But why you get sick, that's not determined at all by clinical care, not even access to clinical care. Uh, this pie chart comes from the World Health Organization showing the effects of physical environment, genes and biology. Maybe we can't change genes, but the rest we can. And the social and economic factors, in addition to the health, health behavior factors, are 70% of the variability in healthcare, seven times as important as anything we could do with a direct, direct uh, delivery of clinical services. My colleagues in in, uh, in Sweden, in Jönköping, Sweden, uh, long ago gave me this uh, next diagram, which is an attempt to show uh, the, uh, the array of factors that appear to determine our health. And this, this particular graph in many, many forms can be found throughout the world's literature now on health determinants and has been fully embraced by the World Health Organization in its work on health in all policies. Uh, you'll notice that health care does appear in the, as a factor, but it's a tiny, tiny factor. And so if we were visiting from Mars and came to Earth and said, gee, it's so nice you, you people are, are uh, so invested in trying to achieve well-being for your populations, show me how you do it. The visitor from Mars would become very confused very quickly. They would see that in the United States we are spending $3 trillion on this tiny little circle of determinants of health as if it were somehow magically we're going to bring us health and well-being. And the amount we're spending on the rest is infinitesimal. It's tiny compared to what we're spending on this uh, repair shop uh, called healthcare. Um, the, um, the term for this overall picture that's widely used is, is social determinants of health. I guess by that we mean non-healthcare delivery determinants of health. Um, in any uh, analysis of the array of social determinants, what we're talking about, which are, include a very wide array of things, including the physical environment and, and nutrition and, edu and uh, exercise, um, almost every single model of social determinants ends up with something like this, and this comes from the World Health, Health Organization. And what I, what I want you to look at is the yellow circle kind of intermediating between all of the other generators of health and well-being and what they call here social and community networks. This is a matter of connectedness. Connectedness, the ability to be part of a community, to have a community um, that helps you get through your life, so to speak, and uh, social systems that help you, is absolutely core to any modern theory of the achievement of well-being. It's not, a, it's not a, just a mechanical process. It's a, it's a, it's a social sociologic process, a relationship process. I'll give you examples from two scholars in the field. One that I admire a great deal is an American um, physician named Wayne Jonas, who has been the, the CEO of the Samueli Institute. He, Wayne has followed a trail that he calls salutogenesis, the generation of well-being. And, and what, what he points out is the generation of well-being, called salutogenesis, is not the same as the, as the, as the, fix, as the fixing of disease. It has to do with the establishment of optimal healing environments, that can close that 10 or 20 year gap on that subway ride. And you see in this very simplified version of Wayne's work, uh, the, the four characteristics, psychological resilience, this has to do with the mental state that a person enters, enters the world with and, and conducts himself through the world. Physical exercise and sleep, you already knew that. Optimum nutrition and substance abuse, of course. And then look at that social integration piece, Wayne, feels, and he has the data to show that one's ability to integrate into society, uh, to use the terms of this webinar, not to be lonely, closely relate to achieving well-being overall. 
Uh, another uh, 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 recently better known um, example is the work of uh, Dan Buettner, who's written uh, a lot about blue zones. Blue zones are a dozen or so areas around the world where Dan has gone where people live commonly more than 100 years. And he's asked the question, what characterizes these societies where people live long? And, and he's, got, he, he, he's got these nine, he calls it the blue zone nine, the nine factors that he seems to find everywhere he looks, physical activity, uh, purpose in life, uh, uh, the ability to relax, uh, eating wisely, making good choices about the, what you eat. But look at that bottom three. He calls it belonging, a healthy social network, connection with some form of spirituality, and the connection to family. This is, this is the opposite of loneliness, and Buettner shows that if you want to live long and well, don't be lonely. Don't be isolated. Find ways to connect. So, so that's my introductory summary of what I'll call the science. The science shows that, that the clinical effects here are not marginal. This is an article from the British Medical Journal Family Journal called Heart, which is their cardiology journal, and um, the title, Loneliness and Social Isolation as isolation is Risk Factors for Coronary Heart Disease and Stroke. Look at the effect. Coronary heart disease, a 29% difference in coronary heart disease rates between, um, in incident rates between people who score high on loneliness or in isolation or low and a 32% difference in stroke. We know no drug, no medicine, no intervention, no surgery that changes well-being uh, at the level of 29% risk of coronary heart disease or 32% risk of stroke. It cannot be done with health care. It has to be done with community. And so I'll, I'll summarize the science as I read it. As a force in shaping our health and well-being, medical care pales in, in comparison with the circumstances and properties of the communities in which we live. Few aspects of community are more powerful in this regard than is the degree of connectedness and social support for individuals. So we're in this together, and when we stay together, we achieve better health. And if we don't, now you're going to hear from two real experts in the field, Julianne and Robin, one an academician and one a practitioner who will tell us more about actually how to capitalize on this immense amount of science. So back to you. <laughs> 